Bob here for the old Iron Lover channel. Welcome back. Uh, this is going to be the second video in a series on uh, the uh, Brig Briggs & Stratton Model B engine. And in the first piece we uh, disassembled it and kind of looked it over and decided what else was going to need. Uh, the second segment we're going to uh, put it all back together. We took it apart, uh, took the sump off, clean it out, make sure the oil system is not gummed up. Uh, pop the cap off of the uh, breather, the crankcase breather, be sure it's not plugged up. And uh, took off a bunch of extraneous exhaust plumbing and tested the magneto. And the magneto didn't have any spark, so we'll, we'll deal that with the magneto probably in the third video. So um, I guess at this point we're going to put it back together. And when I took this engine apart, um, I didn't take the head and the cylinders, piston, the connecting rod, all that apart. It's, um, it's got real good compression and I didn't see any reason, anything in it that told me I ought to take it apart. So uh, I will put, you know, fix the magneto and all that. Um, took the uh, oil pump apart, cleaned it, make sure it was uh, good and clean. So well, now we're ready to uh, start putting this um, engine back together. We took apart the sump to get the uh, oil system and all that cleaned out and the sump was full of oily, old oily slime. And uh, while we're here we can kind of take a look at the inside of the engine just to see what's going on there. Okay, here's the throttle linkage on, the, on the, this side of the, uh, the engine. And the governor So here you can see the governor mechanism working up and down against this throttle lever here. Okay, you can see the uh, connecting rod inside there. You can see the two cam lobes down in here. And in between the cam lobes, right in there, is a... Uh, that's a, a cam also, and that's the cam that runs the oil pump. The oil pump is like so, and this, uh, the top of this arm here, or plunger, rubs against the, uh, the center of the camshaft there. And as it pumps up and down, it's going to squirt oil out of here, which is going to hit the, uh, uh, the connecting rod, and it's probably also going to splash all over other places as well. So it's going to be, you know, basically splash all over the inside. It's sort of a splash oiler system, but it's it's a pumped splash oiler system instead of having a, a dipper on the end of the uh, connecting rod that just slings oil all over. So we're going to get the uh, get the oil pump in. Okay, the only thing left to go here is the, uh, the sump. Okay, that gasket is miscut. Okay, if I line up the holes on this side, we're about three quarters of a hole off on this side. 
and vice versa, of course. So I'm going to have to repunch these holes. I'm going to do that off camera. Okay, there you have it. Uh, the gaskets are, are right now. So the gasket is right now. That's, I guess that's one of those examples where you can buy something that looks good, but it really isn't. Well, to keep the gasket from sliding around while I'm positioning everything, I just made a couple little quickie studs here. There we go. Okay. Okay, can't see down in there real well, but I will tell you that the the uh, filter material and the screen and everything down in there is just really, really clean. So we just uh, slide it down in there. And it just sort of hangs in there, just below the top. Like so, and we okay on there, nice and snug. Now we'll put the uh, magneto plate in. Next we're going to put the uh, magneto plate on and uh, the, the magneto plate on the back of it has a series of gaskets uh, that look something like this. I'm going to replace the gaskets. I don't know really if it's a good idea or not, but I like knowing where everything is uh, when I put them together. So um, Those gaskets set the end play on the crankshaft. So. I took that gasket off, it was only one, and there was uh, four or five gaskets in the kit, the new kit, so I put them all on. Now, the reason I did that is without any of them on there, you're just pushing it in by hand, I had no play on the end of the crankshaft. I don't know if that meant there was no play when I tightened up the bolts, or if there was preload on the crankshaft, which could damage uh, the little shield on the back of the, of the uh, mag plate. So rather than take a chance on that, I put all the, all the shims in and uh, measure the clearance. Okay, pulling up, pulling on it, which is pulling it as far as it'll go. And then pushing it along the end. I got about 16 thousandths. I want to be between two and eight thousandths. So what I'm going to do is make them take the mag plate back off I'm going to mic the uh, uh, shims and see how many I got to remove to get in between the, the to take basically 12 thousandths off. Uh, anyway.
There is a bushing on the inside of this. I want to take it easy on that too. I'm just going to mic all the shims to start with. Okay, and I have about 22 thousandths worth of shims. And I have 16 thousandths in play. I want, if I want to take that down to, say, 4 thousandths, I need to lose 12 thousandths. I've got 22 here, and there's uh, 4 in the kit. I believe these are all the same thickness. But in some of the kits, they're not. So you might have to mic the individual ones. So we're down to one shim. Got a one screw in holding a, the, in place. I'm going to thread the uh, spark plug wire back up behind everything here, like so. And then slide it on. Line up the screw. Okay, pull it back. Serial the DI, push it forward. We got about six thousandths, and that is in the uh, two to eight range. And I know with uh, with the uh, that gasket missing, I already did that by hand, and we were sitting right at zero. So I feel very comfortable. This is the this is the number we want right here. I've got the uh, the mag part done as far as I'm going to take it right now. I'm going to go ahead and get everything else on the engine that I can uh, before we uh, uh, you know, get into the mag because I, I haven't really made a good video on troubleshooting the mag and I want to do that before I cover it back up with the with the plate here. Plus I don't have uh, my new condenser yet anyway. So um, let's get the sump on, oh the sump's on, let's get the uh, the uh, intake back together. Uh, before we go too much further I thought I'd put the carburetor back together and uh, the only adjustment as far as the internals is the float and it needs to be level, so we measure from one tang to the other. And I get a flashlight so I can see it better. It should be the same. Okay, and I am nine hundred and seventy, and this one's quite a bit higher on this side. So I need to bend the bend the tang to. Lower the outside end, lower the uh, the uh, unhinged end. And when you do these, um, most of you guys already know this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, you don't want to just push down to bend the tang um, against the the needle because it's going to mash the needle into the seat and it won't be happy when it's all done. And honestly, it's not, on most of these old carburetors, it's just not a critical adjustment. You basically need to have enough gas in the bowl to make the engine run and not so much that it runs out the top. But they give you instructions, it's probably okay to follow them. And we're okay, 
Okay, we're just a little under an inch over here. We're just a little under an inch. We're about as close to level as we're going to get it. Um, Making sure there's nothing on the internals that I need to pay attention to. Make sure there's no dust or anything inside that we can avoid. Okay, snug it up. Snug it up. Snug it up. Okay, this piece right here, this metering rod here, needs to uh, come off when you're disassembling the carburetor. It needs to come off before you try to separate these two pieces. It it, it uh, jams up the stuff in between if you don't, and you might bend it if you try to force it. And then this is your mixture adjustment and it's pretty complicated when you get the engine running you adjust it in and out until it runs smoothly at all rpms pretty much it i'm going to back this thing out a little bit because i don't want to risk getting it tighter than it originally was and jamming the needle into the seat. Back it out one and a quarter turns. That's pretty much just standard for everything, but I'm going to double check that real quick. Yep, one and a quarter. Oh, and in here is the, uh, I guess it's the idle mixture adjustment, but I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up and see which one's which. But I'll screw it in until it lightly seats and come out one and a quarter turns there, too. Okay, I found the little washer, and... Uh, now this has got a little bit of drag on it. That's your choke. And there's open and there's closed. We're ready to remount this on the engine. Well, here we have another brand new gasket with the holes cut too close together. So I'm going to go off camera for a minute and reset that. Okay, got the uh, gasket adjusted. Okay, got it on. I think we'll get the fuel tank mounted next. I like to put just a little bit of never seize on the threads on these things.
she's moderately tight, as the book says, which is going to be a good strong pull on a short handled wrench here, as far as I'm concerned. I like doing things to head bolts. Go ahead and go ahead and put the uh, kill switch back on. Okay. Now I can't put the uh, air cleaner back on because the pipe for it fits on the br this bracket which is what holds the uh, shroud on. And I don't want to put the shroud on until I finish with the magneto. So I'm done with this as far as I can go there. I need to get the cotter pin in here in the linkage and get the gas line in. So I'll put the gas line in. Let me turn it around where you can see it. Okay. Okay, that's in good. Let's get our oil drain plug back in. There's a cotter pin for the linkage. Okay, that's that. And generally, I put never seize on anything that's going to get hot. So the exhaust system, head bolts, uh, stuff like that, um, I put gum them up pretty good with never seize. on good as it's gonna be I think now my new spark plug and my new condenser have not arrived yet so I'm going to put the old spark plug back in it's not gapped properly oh this is another place where things get hot I know it's not necessary but I do it anyway And I was just putting that in there to keep anything from getting into the getting into the uh, cylinder head. Well, thanks for watch, watching the uh, video on the Bra Briggs and Stratton engine, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, and uh, you're certainly welcome to subscribe too. If you have a comment you want to leave that you think I'd like to hear, well, please leave it. And uh, until the next uh, series of videos, happy trails.